All right, cool stuff. So I think maybe let us let us begin. Um, mm. And whoever falls in will fall in. So hello to everybody that has joined us today. Um, my guest today is Anissa Mpungwe, who I think is a designer extraordinaire. I followed her career from like way back in the beginning. And I think that, you know, as a woman in an industry that is incredibly challenging, um, she's done incredibly well. And um, I'm going to pass over the speaking stick to you so that you can, <laughs> you can just tell, you can tell the participants what it is that you do in a okay. nutshell. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm Anissa. Hello everyone. Um, so I own a, a clothing uh, brand called Loincloth and Ashes. And I started my business um, in 2008, uh, so quite a while ago. Um, and yeah, I've had, a few adventures with my business, um, lots of lessons learned. Um, yeah, and I suppose today we're going to talk quite a bit, um, Rudwana, about the ups and downs of uh, being in business. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's probably one of the best decisions that I've made uh, in my life to not kind of work for anybody, just to work for myself. Um, uh, and it obviously hasn't been an easy road, but it's definitely been a rewarding one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I am, I'm on the fence about that a little bit. <laughs> 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 All right, yeah. so just a little bit of housekeeping um, is if you have a question, um, please type it in the chat. Uh, at the end of the at the end of the talk, I, if you wish to um, unmute yourself, just let me know, and then um, you can ask Anissa a question if you wish to live. Otherwise, I'm happy to read it out on the chat. When you do type a question, if or if it's a comment, you can please use the selection of to everyone. Um, otherwise, the um, other option is to type it directly to me. Um, all right, cool. So, um, have you? Started your journey, um, oh, geez, it's how many years ago now? Um, long ago. <laughs> a, really, a really long time ago. And, yeah. um, you know, it would be interesting to know what actually led you into fashion. Yeah. Um, so uh, quite a few people think I'm South African, but I'm actually Tanzanian. Um, I came to South Africa in 1994 and uh, my parents were diplomats. Uh, my dad was the ambassador uh, of Tanzania to South Africa, the first one. So um, everything kind of in my childhood and in my young adult life led to me probably being in a foreign service because you know my, my, my parents were in it. Um, but because I was quite a creative minded young person, um, I really fought to be in anything creative and nothing <laughs> to do with foreign service. Uh, so I think that really pushed me, first it pushed me to fine arts and then later on it pushed me to fashion. Um, and I, yeah, I would really say more than anything, it's probably like a rebellious way for me to, to not do what my parents did that brought me into fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know, we know how that conversation usually goes when you're sitting down with your folks and you go, I think I've decided what I want to do with my life. I'm going to be a designer. Yeah. What? Are you insane? <laughs> how are you going to oh, make yeah. money? <laughs> yeah, that, that, oh, that's yeah. the usual thing is how are you going to make money? So did your brand, was your brand always focused on luxury or, or did, you, did you start in a place and end up in luxury by, by design? No, I even actually think at the moment is probably entry to luxury um, as opposed to the, 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 the kind of general, the, the uh, standard of luxury at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So obviously in the beginning, it's always experimental. Uh, there's so many things as a young person that you go through to prove yourself within the industry, to find your language, your footprint, um, uh, to kind of go through different experiences to then find what your sound is, how, what your smell is, who, who you are as, um, uh, well, what your brand identity is. So 
Mm-hmm. I think we mm-hmm. we are definitely in the in the entry level to co- um, contemporary fashion. Um, really, because I mean, I'm looking at I'm looking at the um, uh, I'm looking at the landscape of who I'm selling to, and luxury is really nice, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would love to reach as many people as I possibly can, and not mm-hmm. many people can fall under the category of luxury in mm-hmm. terms of spending power. Exactly, exactly. So this is the precise reason why I invited you um, to this chat is because it's in that sort of that sweet spot that um, it's sort of like just before it becomes something that is unachievable for the general population. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a great spot to be in because people in that particular category have decent buying power. Um, mm. You know, people in that particular category are not, re- they, they do make very, very thoughtful purchases, but it's also purchases that are sometimes, no, not sometimes, that are more often repeat purchases once they are in love with the brand. And mm. you have an insane following. You mm. have a lot of people that are completely devoted and in love with your brand. And we want to deep dive into that. Like, why is it that people are so deeply in love with LCA? Simply, mm. simply put, you know, what is it that you think that drives people to, to repeat purchases of a product that is like yours? Um, I think with me, what I've noticed is just um, consistency. That is really key to anything in life. If you want to live a healthy life, you exercise all the time or you eat well. If you um, want to never wake up tired, you sleep early. You So for me, it's um, what, I've, what I know, even for myself as a person, as a consumer, is that consistency is key. And after consistency, you get loyalty. A lot of the customers that I have um, are not necessarily people who are on social media. They're not necessarily people who are in it with the, with with what's happening. They contact me directly, um, and people who have been following me from from when I started um, uh, twelve years ago, thirteen years ago. Um, so so I think, and and then the the newer the newer clientele um, when they come in, they also learn and understand the culture of LCA. Um, I've always been kind of, I didn't know this before, but my approach to things has always been quite nurturing in a way. So if there is a a challenge that I need to kind of face, I I face it it in a way that I only know how. (laughs) And and I think it, 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 it is, it's purely because I'm I'm a, I'm the eldest in my family, so I have two younger sisters. They're all mm-hmm. also creative, um, and all the things that are kind of put into you as a as a as a firstborn, um, <laughs> I, I, I I I I find that I approach my customers in that way where I need to be understanding of what their challenges first. Um, and, and, and genuinely hear them, not just to kind of nod, smile and say, okay, okay, fine, fine, buy the dress. No, yeah. to really understand what is the actual, you know, what are your challenges, where are you comfortable, where, where are you not comfortable? And I think people do appreciate that. Um, and I'm lucky enough, because I'm small, I'm lucky enough to, to be able to do that, as opposed to being a big corporate where... You wouldn't speak necessarily to me. You would speak to so and so and so and so and so and so to get to a solution. So I mm-hmm. think that helps with um, gaining followers, gaining loyalty. Um, yeah, and also listening to where we make mistakes and and fixing those things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Um, I think in 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 the South African context, perhaps we don't spend a lot of time developing a story really well around our brands. But, you know, I think Loincloth and Ashes has a great story. Um, you know, how do you constantly feed that story to your, to your clientele? Um, how do you constantly, um, you know, let them know that they are still in the nurturing space of LCA? Um, through com- uh, communicating, I, I think, uh, and being honest with what's going on with LCA, um, 
sometimes I send out newsletters, sometimes I speak to people directly if I really need to. Um, I used to be very stressed when Instagram came a few years ago uh, because <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't part of the script. <laughs> You know, like we were only told to be like a, a fashion designer and then have the business and like carry on and do your thing. But when all of a sudden now you have to be cool and witty and you have to, now I have to show myself self. Like that, 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 I think that still is a little bit challenging for me to be honest, but I try to at least go into that space to, to communicate. Um, mm. And I think, <laughs> I suppose it's nice from time to time to see the face of the, the, the person behind the brand um, and see what she's doing, what she's, what's going on. I mean, especially now with everything uh, changing in 2020, we had to mm -hmm. change quickly with it. Mm -hmm. And, and because it was, it's such a, um, it's such a sensitive time. I too need to really, I had to really figure out, okay, how do I speak to my customer in the most genuine way with the product that we are now um, selling um, and, and the steps that we're taking to be as careful as we possibly can. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I take responsibility for the, for the product that we sell, you know? Right. Um, yeah. And if, if ever someone is kind of unsure, I need to be able to settle that person's mind to say, this is actually the procedure that we took to create these masks um, because I have you in my mind, um, right. you know. Right, right. So before we dive into post-2020, because that yeah. is going to be a meaty discussion, um, yeah. I kind of just want to find out from you, um, you know, the ubiquitous question that all designers get asked. Um, and I, I know that you have a lot of thoughts on this, but what challenges what unique challenges did you face, um, not in the beginning of your business, because I think we all are already familiar with what happens in the beginning stages of business, but sort of like in your, your middle, your teenage years, you know, um, mm -hmm. if, if, if your life cycle were like from the beginning, you're a baby, and then sort of like maybe five years into your brand, that's your teenagehood, right? I, I'd like to know what sort, of, what sort of challenges did you face in that area of your, of your business? Everything. <laughs> Every, everything um uh, so uh when i started i immediately the response that i got from quite a few people was open a store open a store um and i didn't know anything about a store i didn't know anything about excel spreadsheets apart from matric level <laughs> uh you know accounting you know like it, it was do this and do this so i think i naturally for me i took it one year at a time to be very very honest i took one year at a time but i knew i had like a goal so i knew that i wanted to be outside my parents house by a certain age because if i'm outside my parents house by a certain age that means um i need to be in a specific place in my career and that mm -hmm. and 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 that meant okay I needed to be as close to, to people as possible because I needed to speak to the, to, the, to the people who buy my stuff to know, okay, you like this, you don't like this, you enjoy this, you don't enjoy this. So the challenge was to get a space that I could work from and live from and without it feeling too kind of casual. Mm -hmm. So that's why I moved to Maboneng when... Um, in 2010, when Maboneng was just starting out. And I was lucky in that way, because as they were growing, and we as the creative community, they were growing, we fit into each other, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. really great. And, we, and it gave me a chance to not kind of be breathless on, oh, I now have to have a store, and now I have to have like this payment system, and now I have to, <clears throat> you know, I, I could then be like, okay, so now I need to get an accountant that can help me with my paperwork and then mm. I need to now get a space that I could afford that could put the that I could put the items um, in there and see if I could sell but the rental couldn't be very high mm. like they were step by step so for me every year was different and for me it had to be because that, that's how I needed to and it had to be different as long as it was progressive 
Mm -hmm. um, so those, the challenges were, was everything was from, I opened a store, but I didn't hire a shop assistant mm -hmm. because I don't know, somehow I thought <laughs> I could, you be could do behind, it all. <laughs> I could be behind the counter and in the studio, but I, but what I did was within the, the, the shop space, I had a room behind it, which was big enough for a studio. Mm. So I didn't have logistical problems so much. So I said, okay, well, I could answer it by having somebody uh, three or four times a week while I'm back in the studio and doing the studio thing with, um, I had two seamstresses at the time. So you'd have the two seamstresses and then it gradually moved up like that. And what I underestimated was the power of having a store, brick and mortar mm. at the time where it was very exciting and people were very encouraged to come and support these young creators within this Maboneng space, which is a new cool spot in town. So mm -hmm. in that way, I was lucky. But yeah, mm -hmm. I was challenged with everything. With pretty much everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This story is incredible. I think, you know, fashion designers in SA face really, really unique challenges. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a it's a tough space to be in for most people. I think it's a really tough space to be in. So as your as your journey progressed, and then we sort of now cascaded face first into COVID, your challenges are obviously way more unique. Um, you know what what are the current challenges that you're facing? Well, oh gosh. So last year September, I opened uh, one store, and uh, co-exist in another store in Santon. So it everything happened in one time and it was such a lucky time for me. We worked really hard to get the store running. And every time we wanted to do a launch party for this store, so for some reason it just didn't happen. Schedules were funny, my show producer couldn't come or there was just, there were a few issues all the way up to this year and mm -hmm. In February, we got everything done. We got our sponsors ready to go. I had a whole like spectacular, spectacular thing going. Um, and then, yeah, COVID happened. Um, and it it's probably the most painful thing that I've actually gone through because I then have this space that I haven't even really started using and promoting. It felt like it would be very insensitive. Um, even I wasn't feeling right with it. In, in my family, we've lost um, two people to this um, uh, oh, virus. I'm really sorry so, to hear that. Uh, it's okay. Um, so, so, so in my mind, you know, I had to make decisions very quickly, and as a business person and leave the creative emotional Anissa on the back seat mm. uh, and and I and I and I said okay well that's it we need to close the store uh, even if I'm going to lose a, a lot of money <laughs> um, we have to close the store so the the Norwood store the the, the, the the first one that one is closed the Santon one is still going um, but the only the only I, to be honest with you, because this is my second store that I've closed, uh, the only way I could do that was because I closed my first one, the mm -hmm. one in Maboneng. And the reason why I closed that one was because I could see, okay, Maboneng was starting to change and the ethos of Maboneng and the ethos of loincloth and, and ashes were not, were not aligning. And it took me about a year to make that decision. And it was very hard. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I spoke to everyone that I admire under the sun about closing it. I had to face my ego, like, oh, what are people going to think? Um, lots of tears, you know, oh, and, I, and, and, and I closed that. And I'd never quite understood, like, gosh, like, why did I work so hard? Like, why did I have to not close this space, you know, mm -hmm. and make this tough decision? And that answer is being answered now when I'm closing the second store that, you know, as a business person, or at least as an entrepreneur, you can't be too emotional about certain decisions. You have to look at the really big, big picture. You may mm -hmm. not be 
you 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 may you may lose the fight but you haven't lost the war you know so yeah. in my mind the the decision to close came in march when the president said right you're closing uh we will uh locking down the 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 country i said well i can I consulted with about two or three people who know about previous pandemics, right. um, some medical um, uh, friends, um, and people in, in, in sectors that are outside of my own. Um, mm -hmm. And just to have a realistic view of what's going to happen in the next six to 12 months. And, bec and from their feedback, I knew, okay, <laughs> give in the notice, uh, the notice now. <laughs> Um, and, and come back and think about what you need to do next. Oh, that's like a physical pain, hey? It really is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's no joke. However, we've been the busiest. That's great. Ever that's since great. we closed. Yeah, we've been the busiest. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're new. You some, you lose some. You, that is true. That is true. And so you're now, you're now just doing masks and that's obviously just temporary because we know it's a, it's yeah. a product that has a limited lifespan. Um, and you know your, I mean your masks are great. I have a look. I had a look at them. They're really, really beautiful. Um, you. you know, did you find it to be a sort of natural progression that your existing clientele would come to you for masks, or did you have to, did you have to shout about it a little bit? Um, I started off with my friends actually, so nothing was online or anything, and that's why I say loyalty is key, consistency is key. People who already trust you. You don't have to work so hard. Mm -hmm. um, so I started off with a group of friends and I said, guys, this is what I'm doing. I need to save as much as I possibly can. Um, at the, and at that time, I think I had an option of, do I stay or do I go back home? I have parents who are above 65, um, my, a sister who is um, asthmatic. So it was really like a battle of what do I do? Do I leave? I have um I have my tailors and my seamstresses and my shop assistant. Mm. How do I abandon ship? <laughs> you know I can't do that. So um, I, I I sent um, a message to my friends. My friends sent to their friends and their friends and their friends. So I was selling masks quietly for a while until I got a bit of a rhythm of what I'm doing because I've never done masks before. Right. At, at least in, in this in this in this um, um, climate, mm -hmm. um, and then I moved on from there, and I put it online. I I think I mentioned I, I keep re reposting. I'm not even on. Uh, I, I keep uh, reposting what people are sending me, which I'm so grateful for that they they are buying from me, and a lot of new. Um, a, a lot of new um, uh, um, audience as well. So it's not my normal, usual label. Many new ones that right. I I don't know. So it hasn't been. I haven't gone far and beyond or anything. All I needed to focus on was create a good product. Right, right. That is that is really amazing. Um, so. You know, there's a there's a huge migration. Oh, okay, maybe it's not anymore a migration, um, but like in the in the U.S. and in, in markets abroad, people are already and have already been living online for ages. You know, they would rather prefer to buy online than they would go into a store. Um, but the uptake is not that great. In SA, we have we have quite a few issues with regarding the, like regarding that. And you know, I think okay. So for me personally, um, I just find it annoying to shop online with stores in SA because they're not geared for online shopping. So it's so frustrating to hunt around for a product when it's just that much faster to go into a store and pull it off a shelf and get it out, you know, get home, get, get done with it. Um, how is your online journey going to look from now onward? Okay, um, well, like you've said, I think we also need to be a, a bit fair to the South African uh, space really because we are always falling behind, or African as a whole, we are always falling behind as to what the Western trends are doing. Because they have been online for a longer time, the teething 
period for them has long gone and they've got it on lock and they even have systems that are really easy That's courier true. services drop shipping you know um different uh uh payment um facilities whereas with us i mean to this point we can't even work with paypal yet because they haven't kind of worked it out with the south african government uh, i'm assuming yeah so, i mean they work so, with one bank that's it <laughs> yeah so yeah. so 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 and having said that i think to just give um the, the the person who does want to i've always advocated for online i think i i went i was have i have been online since uh, 2016 and i can tell you i feel like i'm luckier because i had enough time to see okay this is a mistake don't do this do this packaging like this this is going to cost too much or this is not good quality or you know so, and especially now that, ooh, the stress is really on for everyone, mm -hmm. um, people are trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way? Because you as a person can create the perfect product. You can have the best packaging. Mm -hmm. But if, let's say, your courier person is not, a, n not up to par, it obviously reflects on you to the cut from the customer, but you did everything right. Yeah. Or... Or, or say, or say you do have a great product, but you're not very good with computers. <laughs> you're not, so you're busy trying to learn like coding on YouTube. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> while, while you're trying to send this somebody online because you still have like a, a product, all, all your product is still in its developing stage and you're still trying to figure it out. And the only way you're gonna know whether you're doing good or not is when you get your first complaint. <laughs> That is true. So, yeah. So, so is to check is to check and see like, okay, um, uh, what is my return policy? I think that is one of the biggest ones. When I started, I have a friend in um, uh, Berlin, a lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, because I knew at some point I would want to ship on, uh, overseas. I went to that person. I'm like, right, what are the European laws on online shopping, return policy, privacy, all of it. And mm -hmm. we sat down for a full week going through this document to see what is right and what isn't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so things like that, that take a bit of time. So I think with South Africa, and especially now that everyone is really forced to go online, please just bear with people. <laughs> <laughs> No. Doing, so <laughs> doing the best they can. No, that is true. That is true. But the, my, my experience that I mentioned was not with small retailers. It's with big retailers uh, who should actually be there already. Yeah. Um, the most pleasant big retail um, online experience, I think maybe belongs to Mr. Price. They're quite they're quite on it, you know, um, and I, I'm not going to name drop it. I'm not going to call out people, but I'm just saying like big retailers who in essence should have made it easier ages ago because they have seen this. They have seen it yeah. coming. They have seen, you know, how, how the US, how Europe, how mm -hmm. even Asia, well, Asia, no, no one can compete with Asia, but no. um, you know how they've been doing yeah. it. So, so it's it, the, the little guys, in fact, I've actually had good experiences with small brands. I think mm -hmm. it's more because it, it's tight. It's like a one, you know, it's a one store concept. You're not having to deal with many suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. That maybe makes all the difference. Um, before I jump um, into my next, sorry, no, go ahead, go ahead. Um, um, just a quick one. Um, I think, I think you've got a, a good point, but I don't think things are isolated. Mr. Price, which I've been associated with in the past, they have been on the ball, I would say since, um, probably since 2006, 2007. Yeah. They yeah. have been in the, on the ball since then. They recognized, I don't know who they hired or I don't know who they're consulting with, for example, but they realized that, oh, we need to speak in a specific way to the type of customer we're, we're speaking to. So they adapted with the changes. So if someone is on, like in 2012, yes, there was Instagram, but it wasn't as big as it is now, but they were yes. on it. Yes, they were really, yes. They were on it. Whereas, and I think because like 
this year it ha has has it's blown up a lot but inclusivity and diversity in companies if you do not include those things you will fall behind absolutely um that's just it's the same thing with me i can sit here and be like ah oh, i don't like tiktok <laughs> but i need to find a way because it's true because otherwise you, you're going to be left behind and that is why many companies even now if you go to the, the bigger companies if you go to the online store and it's not looking so great it's because it actually didn't stem from being online it stemmed from other things within the company mm -hmm. um which is which is sad i mean you have like one of i'm also not mentioning but one of the the, the companies that are in big trouble now they're about 89 years old and if you yeah next to somebody like asos who is 10 years old i mean asos has even interactive videos when you're busy purchasing stuff yeah and they only 10 years so you need to as a company even as you are at small companies we need to think about it in that way not mm. to just disregard just actually be like okay if well if i can't do it i'm gonna get like an intern to do it but at least i'm on the mark absolutely absolutely you know we are seeing more and more of the marriage of fashion and tech and um you know and i think that's a necessary marriage right now especially right now um it's one of in fact i i think it's scheduled for the 7th um of august i'll be chatting to um a fashion tech incubator in nigeria so definitely look out for that because I, I think it would be interesting to find out exactly you know how does that marriage actually work and how should it work you know how do we how do we capitalize on it um, so before I jump into my next question, I just wanted to ask, like, where are you, where do you currently have a presence in the world? Uh, uh, you mean like a store? Uh, not necessarily a store, but like, even if you're selling in a store, w store within a store concept, not, not your own brick and mortar. Okay, so I, everything is coming out of my online store or okay. they, they, or they order privately from me. I had two stores in England that stopped us, um, but at the moment we shipping is a bit of a nightmare, so we're pausing a, a little bit there. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm really happy uh, to see, but also surprised, is we're getting a lot of orders from Ireland for some reason. <laughs> I don't That's know what's going cool. on. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but yeah, we're getting a lot of orders from Ireland and. Um, um, just this morning, I was speaking to somebody in um, uh, what's that place in uh, uh, somewhere in the US? I'll think about the place now. But yeah, um, uh, a lot of orders from from there. I don't know if somebody is marketing us or it's just a natural way of people seeing us mm -hmm. doing our thing this side, but. Mm -hmm. So far, that is what's happening with me. Um, uh, I wish I was in more stores, but I think at the moment online is the best format that is um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, going, like it's positive for our business. Right, right. Um, and with the current lockdown situation, um, you know, how are you, how are you getting around the courier situation or shipping? You're not able to, right? No, no, I can. I can. Okay. Um, yeah, I've sent a few things. Uh, you mean internationally? Yes, internationally. Yeah, um, okay. you can. You you can. You can. Uh, I'm, I've been working with DHL. They've been pretty good. Okay. Um, I've sent a few boxes to even home. <laughs> oh, nice. Family to uh, yeah. So I've done uh, um, a few in England, um, Ireland, the the US. Uh, the, it's just there's a lot of paperwork. You you mm -hmm. need to have an import export um you have to have uh you know the certificate to as an essential service provider or mm -hmm. uh, essential um essential essential product <laughs> provider right. um, um but i haven't struggled i haven't struggled really i although mm -hmm. i think i'm amazed the way people are talking about the second wave so that's mm -hmm. Everything, yeah. yeah, I know. I don't want to think about that right now. <laughs> no, I know. But you have to plan. You have to plan. That is true. You know, if you, if what is it? If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Absolutely. Yeah. My you husband's always least... going on about that. <laughs> yeah, I have to think about, you know, what to do. Yeah, no, that is true. So, um, you know, in terms of your value chain, 
um, what, uh, how, what are your thoughts about being in control of every aspect of your value chain? I think in an ideal world, it is fantastic. That means you've really got your eye on the, on, on the prize. Um, you could at least go away and not have to think about stuff. <laughs> Things are running on their own. Um, but in, I feel like the South African space for a young or for, for a small business, you do need to um, work with others. Um, it gets you further. Um, it's easier for you to um, expose yourself to different kinds of markets. Um, yeah, I, I'm. I'm for. I'm. I'm kind of in between. In between, it is good to 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 be um, self sufficient and be able to control everything, but as a small business, it can be very tiring too, you know, like you can't be like the designer and the driver of fabrics. You know, you, you, at some point you'd have to call the career to be like, please bring that roll of a hundred meters to my video space. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like there's, so you have to really, you have to really, as a business owner, you have to really see, okay, what, what benefits me in terms of time stress mm -hmm. levels what do i give energy to what do what don't i give energy to because um you need you at the end of the day you are the one who has to be the most alert as to what is going to happen next mm -hmm. and you can't be stressed out about so many things while that's happening you will never make good uh, business decisions mm -hmm. that is true and what are your thoughts around sustainability in the sector um, uh, I feel like we are not as bad as the other, this continent is not like as bad <laughs> as others like America, because um, they're such a, um, they, they, they consume so much. With us, I mean, even with our households, the way we do things around the house is also kind of, kind of not, try and affect the, the, the um, environment as much as possible or I don't know I think our culture I'm not not to say that we don't do it we definitely do obviously um, have issues within sustainability but I don't think we are as we, we I think we, we, we because we're so green I think we do it we, we use sustainability more than other continents with LCA, um, I mean, we, I know for us, we try as much as possible not to, not to spoil the environment, not to, um, um, to be responsible, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and w everything with us is more hands-on, I feel like it's more hands-on here than it is in any other continent. Mm -hmm. I, could, I, I could be corrected, but we still do things very manually, I feel, um, as opposed to, say, China, where everything is churned out very quickly. Yeah, uh, yeah. And disposed of very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the, the, the conversation on sustainability is because China said no more, <laughs> no, we're not accepting any more plastic from America. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, all those um, uh, plastic uh, kind of um, waste had to go somewhere. And all of a sudden now we have the sustainability problem. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's true. Well, China said, we don't want your plastic anymore. And Malaysia said, Malaysia and Indonesia said to China, we don't want your garbage anymore. So now we have a huge issue. But to your point about, you know, sustainability being inherently built into African culture, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, if I just think about like from my granny's time where kitchen scraps were not kitchen scraps, for example, kitchen scraps were food for something else. Um, you know, if they were cutting meat and meat was such a luxury, um, nothing would get wasted. Even if it was just like the gristle, my granny would cook it and give it to the dogs. So mm -hmm. I think it's inherently built into our, our DNA. Um, we are getting wasteful and we are sort of like on a 
bit of a downward trajectory with regards to our plastic pollution problem. Um, you know, and I think that in terms of, of you know, climate change, as a continent, we're going to see the effects of it. We are already seeing the effects of it worse than anyone else, just simply because we've been open to the, I want to call it pillaging a lot more mm -hmm. than any other continent has. And that has put us at risk a lot more. Um, mm. But, you know, around sustainability, I think that your brand has been focused on it quite a lot, even just like with your sourcing, for example. The fact mm. that you employ local labor, um, mm. you know, the fact that you're, you're in control of your value chain as much as you can be in control of your value chain. So I think that that's, that's interesting. Um, mm. I'm, I'm interested in, in knowing, um, you know, what your thoughts are about like the used, the used clothing market. Mm. Um, I, it's, it's, it, it doesn't kind of, in what way, what do you mean? In the in way of, so, so we're seeing a huger amount of, um, luxury and sort of pre-luxury goods. I, I don't know what's the right term for it. Like, but the, the space before you getting to Chanel and Hermes, you know, those, those kind mm -hmm. of things, um, you know, we're, we're seeing a huger amount of those clothes being sold than what actual new clothes are being sold and that will impact people like yourself and mm. how, what are your thoughts around that um i know at the moment for example in the handbag realm a lot of people are selling theirs it's just because it doubles and quadruples in value especially if you have like a louis vuitton bag or you know selling it second hand you could get it for a pretty decent price and it's just a a good business strategy um, like buying a piece of art, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing about um, uh, previously loved items it, within the African space, that has always been there. I mean, so many of us have had hand-me-downs from um, our family members. So, and, and this thing of thrift stores and, um, you know, that, that kind of thing, People, people do, there, there is a big market for that just purely because um, our spending power in Africa as a whole is very different from other places. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the luxury of even sometimes going to a Woolworths to go buy a handbag, never mind the bigger stuff. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we would rather A, make it ourselves or find it in, in a cheaper um, uh, a local designer that may be a little, you know, a little more accessible. Um, so we are the perfect kind of climate to, for, for, for something like this where um, secondhand, I, I could see secondhand working a lot um, quicker in, within the African space than overseas even though overseas is also growing in in mm -hmm. that uh respect because you know there uh, chanel and gucci yes is important and it's a sta status thing it is it it is so here but so is oh i went to woolies today and i managed to buy this yeah you know yeah. that is also very valid here whereas they you know going to wait rose in england <laughs> just another shop you know <laughs> It's true. Yeah. Oh, it's no biggie. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, I, I find the, 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 the pre-loved um, market to be a very interesting, there is a mindset around it that is really interesting. You know, you get um, people who are trolling for bargains and just needing to clothe themselves or clothe their kids. But um, there are also people who are like serious about finding certain particular items. Have you ever had anyone look for an item from LCA that you probably did like 10 years ago and they really want mm. it again? I'm finding people selling LCA. That's amazing. <laughs> you see, that's a market opportunity for you. <laughs> <laughs> selling LCA. Uh, I'm, I'm giggling because the other day we were speaking about something so important in one of my friends' uh, 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 group chats and um I got a ping on the email telling me that, oh, um, uh, Google, what you call this? Um, when Google mentions you, what is it called? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, Google oh search. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you mention, so I click and I'm like, okay, is it a newspaper that I've like interviewed on, or what's going on? And someone who was selling um, an uh, a Nissan Pungwe product in um, on eBay. Oh, jeez. And, and I thought that really kind of made me giggle, and I sent it to my friends. I'm like, I think I can send this to my parents and told them I'm. <laughs> yeah, there you go screenshot it <laughs> so, someone is reselling an anisa mpungwe to uh, on ebay and uh, i think that's an amazing testament to the quality of your garment that it can <laughs> actually get sold again yeah i thought yeah that was that was such a it gave me such a good laugh it, 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 i had a good um i had a good day after that i thought i'm <laughs> Well, what's next? I even told them, um, should something happen to me, you're allowed to sell things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it is crazy how things, how things develop value after, after the person has died or how we enjoy listening to music once the artist has died. I mean, we're so sick as people, really. <laughs> I'm telling you, dark, dark thoughts. <laughs> really? <laughs> But um, so, you know, what's, what's next for you? Um, let's, let's say yeah. masks aside and, you know, COVID aside, where are you going next? Okay, so I'm definitely going head on very strong with online. Um, I don't think it is necessary for the next year or two to be um, uh, physically present anywhere. Um, I, I'm lucky enough to have a home that can accommodate um, a, a home style store. So that is the project between now and at the end of next year to make sure that I have a space that is comfortable for people to come and visit. Basically how I started, uh -huh. um, back to basics, um, how to come and visit and to have a conversation with them, which is something I truly love. Um, uh, to, to engage and to get to know my customer, as well as obviously having to purchase uh, online. Um, I, we were actually busy with it yesterday, um, the, 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 the LCA studio um, on another section of the house, which is big enough to have um, uh, my mentorship programs that I always run um, mm -hmm. for students to come in. It's big enough space uh, to also do that side um, of, of, of what I uh, enjoy doing, um, but to really focus on um, having things as customized as possible in terms of experience. Mm -hmm. um, so I need to take a bit of time to even go onto my uh, website and change a few things, um, think about new products that I'm going to offer, um, uh, and really make sure that I'm also happy because people, people never talk about that part of the business where the creative needs to be content with what they're doing. Absolutely. Um, and, 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 to, and, and to know that you're proud of what you're doing. Um, uh, and, and I've always been a believer of that. So I'm, I'm basically honing in even more mm -hmm. uh, on that. And, and I've always worked with other companies, other bigger corporate companies, and I'll, I'll continue to do that um, mm -hmm. moving forward. But I'm not doing things that are incredibly um, uh, uh, kind of challenging for no reason. Mm -hmm. um, we, as I said, in the, in the past three, since we've been on lockdown, we've been very busy. Um, and I've, I've put really kind of... Um, good measures to make sure that everything runs well, everyone is getting paid, everyone is safe. And it was a bit of a, I had to move my house around, but it, it, mm. it, it, it's working. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm focusing on that and all the money that would go to a rental um, can go into developing product and mm -hmm. to work with more people um, and, do, uh, and do just everything kind of within the company as mm -hmm. as opposed to anywhere else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so besides the mentorships that you that you run um are you going to be focusing on any more social you know social enhancement social good um in what way like working with for example outreach programs perhaps yeah whatever yeah, that no. looks like for you 
Yes, yeah. Um, I'm actually developing a project with my sisters. I have a sister who's a chef and another one who's an architect. And we are working on a project that will involve um, all the continents. Nice. Oh, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you but, share it but, with me when you're ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, we're working on a project which I think we've all been very passionate about. Um, uh, and uh, I'm going to take some time away to actually focus on that a little bit um, mm. and, and see how, how far. So for the next year, it's going to be really crucial uh, in the planting of this, these many seeds. Um, mm. Yeah, so the, the, I'm, I'm pretty excited about um, working with... Um, my, so my achievement for 2021 is to at least have about four businesses running. Yay! Because <laughs> uh, I think, because I think that'll be really great. At the moment, there's two, so I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's amazing. That is super ambitious. Four businesses. One is like enough to kill a person. And, you know, just, oh. just going back to what you just mentioned earlier about, um, you know, nurturing the creative. Um, you know, one thing that I think when we enter the industry, we come from a place of passion um, because, you know, creativity is within your DNA. And when you're creating, that is when you're the happiest. But for mm. a lot of us, running our own businesses mean that you play every single part in that business. And the thing that suffers the most is your creativity. So mm. that really kind of struck home because I've been in a space many a time where my creativity has suffered so much that I hadn't for months picked up a pencil to sketch. And mm -hmm. a pencil is, in, it's in essence, it's just like a digit. It's like my finger, like it's there. It's never, I, I sleep with a, with a sketch pad next to me or I used to sleep with a sketch pad next to me. And it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible how far you can go like in this miasma of running your own thing, you know, from, mm -hmm. from your true calling, which is being able to create. Um, mm. so I think that, you know, I mean, it, it's interesting that you have the mentorship, um, running. I, 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 I think that that's a great way to throw the ladder down to someone else. Mm. Um, and I'd like to see more from other, from other creatives who have made it in this industry, because it's a tough sort of cutthroat industry. You know, you make mm. it or you don't, you know, it's either you can end up being somebody really amazing or you mm. end up, you know, just becoming somebody who fixes up, you know, clothing that is mm. torn, you know, and, and that's the difference. And I think um, it, it's so important to be able to give back. It is, it is, it's crucial. Um, I love it. I love it. And uh, do you, are you, me... do you want Go to ahead. just maybe talk a little bit about your mentorship? Yeah, I love it. It gives me such joy. Um, the mentorship, to put it because I was unhappy um, and I was unhappy the day after I launched my first store in 2012 uh, because I said okay so what now you know I've been sweating sweating now the store's up what now um, and the missing thing was the fact that you're just turning out clothes and you're not really like that's it you're just turning out clothes and and you're drawing something quickly and the skirt is up and then that's you know it's it's it was so empty for me um mm. because i started off from what one-to-one one basis knowing my customer knowing their mom's name knowing their i mean obviously you can't always be like that um mm. business is business but i was missing something and the 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 mentorship program for me is what helped me get my pulse back. Um, where I'm even remembering like maybe things that I forgot or things that I took for granted, you know, like um, how difficult it is to create a, a, a sleeve block or <laughs> time when I used to like pin every little single inch of like an item to press and really reflect and see like appreciate how far you've you've come and to also take great responsibility in passing on that knowledge you you mm. kind of 
you kind of like take this thing, at least for me, I, 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 I have this thing, okay, well, now that you're passing this on, you can't mess up. Like you can't tell lies here. <laughs> you can't be like, <laughs> you, you can't like, like, like tie it in a little bow. You have to tell it like it is, you know, like really pass on knowledge with great responsibility. And, and, and I, that's why I say I approach things a lot like the way I am as a big sister, my younger sister is, I really take it seriously and I take it to heart. And because I'm naturally passionate, um, if all of those boxes need to be ticked. So the mentorship program, I focus a lot on um, uh, product development, concept development, finding, uh, finding your um, uh, blueprint in, within your business. Uh, I don't kind of hold your hand through it I actually make you think about it and I always joke with my interns I'm like if you are mentees if if you're frustrated it means I'm I'm doing a good job <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I'm making you think hard and I'm frustrating you because you're not getting like to the crux of actually what you're trying that means you're doing the work you have to do the research you have to know why the world is moving the way it's moving and how can you apply yourself to that Mm. Um, and not to sell a dream and to say, oh, if you can do anything you want. I used to say that a lot. I can do any. No, you can't do anything you want. Yeah. You no. have to really think. <laughs> Life really will teach you that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It'll humble you. So you have to really focus on something. Also for myself, like it's a reminder for myself, well, Anissa, all these dreams that you have, whoa, just whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> calm down and focus. So, yeah, I take it. Um, I want to do a bit more of it, obviously, a little later on when it's a bit safer, but it's one of my, uh, I cannot tell you how much I enjoy it. I enjoy it. That is it. amazing. That mm -hmm. is incredible. How many, thus far, how many mentees have you had? Oh, a lot. Um, I started in about, I started three years ago, and I had about four or five students um, per year. Um, uh, that are from South Africa, and then two or three from outside uh, the country that come mm -hmm. in specifically for the mentorship, which for wow. me is like a big honor. That's a huge it. deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a huge deal. Um, yeah. Is there is there anyone who is like a like a burgeoning success story you want to share? Um. Well, I taught Rich. Um, oh wow yeah i taught rich when um i used to not part of mentorship but part of um uh lecturing i taught rich right. um he, he used to be like anisa you have these intense eyes like you're always looking at me like you're judging me <laughs> and, I always, and i always tell him no i'm just tired i've been up since four <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> um I worked a little bit with um, uh, Ribane. Um, oh, Mante. Mante. Uh, she's so lovely. She's always been lovely. How do you see she's always been lovely? Um, she worked with me a little bit. Oh, I can't think of anybody else. But Those, those, are, those are enough. Those are huge. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm very glad and to they, hear that. Yeah, and they're doing fantastic. I mean... They're doing really great. <laughs> That's amazing. So I see there's six of us left. We've vacillated between nine and six at some point. Um, does anyone have any questions? If you do and you want to maybe not type it out or you want to put it in a chat, I mean, ugh, you want to actually talk to Anissa, that'll be fine. You can just unmute yourself and you can go ahead and ask your question. Um, but anyway, so, you know, if there's, if there's one thing that you like literally one piece of advice that you want to give to anyone in this industry, whether they are starting out or whether they have, um, oh, somebody has it, whether they are starting out and whether, or whether they are actually, you know, well on the path to success, what's the one piece of advice you want to give them? Um, don't always stay within your focus. Um, don't look at what everybody else is doing because that can be a lot of noise. Um, if you're struggling with something, it's just part of the journey. You, 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 you are going to get 
to a solution. Everything has a solution. Um, and, the, and then not to feel pressure. I feel like the world today is there's just so much pressure. You have to be this. You have to get the best photos. You have to uh, have the best. This, no, you just have to be um, genuine, um, authentic, and consistent. Um, mm -hmm. And people will follow. It will be very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your insane amount of knowledge with us. I think that it is really, really amazing. Hang on a second. Um, so I have, okay, so Aleta, I will be sharing this uh, on my social media. So wherever you found the link for, for this particular Zoom, you'll find the, the link to the recording on there. Um, and Alisa says, Alicia says, she's studying her honors in fashion at Fadisa and she's looking at luxury fashion, both local and international. What do you think is the opinion of local luxury fashion brands in the local market? Um, I think we still need a bit of edu educating um, to what deems luxury for us uh, within the lo local space. Um, you can just see it from like, like how, how people package themselves as a brand. Um, I, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm assuming that's, that's what they're asking. Um, if I could get more. Alicia, do you want to unmute yourself maybe? And then you can perhaps just dive in a little bit on your question. Hi, yes, thank you so much. Um, I just want to know kind of maybe I'm looking at more of the perceptions of quality um, around yeah. local brands. Do you think that people have a different perception of, of because it's made in South Africa, the quality differs to maybe, you know, something that's made in Europe or Australia? Yeah, absolutely. And okay, so I, I got the first part right. Yeah, so we do have a lot of educating um, uh, to, to happen within the South African space. Uh, we, like I said earlier, we are, we are in competition with people that have been in this business for over a hundred years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so they, they've had as much practice as possible. So you will always have, because uh, people have access to market a lot more, it's easier to compare uh, uh, a uh, 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 Balenciaga jacket to uh, uh, who does really good jackets here? Um, uh, like a black coffee jacket, mm. and 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 be like, oh, this one, and then they're both really good brands. This one is doing this, and this one is doing this. We don't have think certain, for example, for example, certain machinery. We don't have. Um, certain expertise that we don't have. Even though, for example, somebody like Black Coffee have been around since I was in um, university. And not to say the product isn't good, it is very good. I just also think because we, we have this culture in within the African space, because it comes from home, it has to be a specific price. Mm. Whereas when we sell our product overseas, we don't go through those things. If you go to Berlin and you're selling your beaded necklace, they will buy it at that two, 200 euros. Or, you know, there's, so I also think it's, it's just, it's just because we just need more educating. We need to educate the public more as to how we create our product. I think so too. You know, it goes back to storytelling um, about your, you know, what, what's your brand message? Um, you know, are you going to be selling the African story? Are you selling the, you know, buy it because it is made in Africa or buy it because it's really, really a great product. And the story behind the product is an amazing story. You know, it's not trying to sell a charity story. It's not trying to, you know, to kind of, 
I don't know, hang on the coattails of I'm, I'm, I am upskilling this person or I am, uh, you know, giving the proceeds to this. That's part of the story and it's a great part of the story. But I think what is sad about a lot of marketing overseas is that whenever an, an African, most, not most, no, that's a terrible generalization, some um, African brands are constantly just looking at the marketing of buy it because it's African, because by buying this, you're going to be supporting people. No. Like we do amazing awesome. things. We really do incredible things here. And the, the level of skill in this, in this, on this continent is amazing. We just need mm. to fix the story a little bit. Absolutely. This thing of, oh, support local, that should almost be a given. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Italians don't go support local by buying. <laughs> 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 they don't do <laughs> They don't do that. They don't do, like, uh, England doesn't go support local by buying um, uh, Henry Holland. They mm. just say buy Henry Holland. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so it is, it is in, in educating, and I think it has to be repetitive. I think mm. us also as the fashion community, we need to have one voice on this um, to say that this is how we view ourselves because people will only treat you the how you how you let them treat you. So if if you are speaking in in a way that is almost like a like a begging supporting, then people will always feel like oh we're doing you a favor, and then you lose that luxury story of actually this took five women to put this thing together. It was flown from this place to this place to get finished and that's where the magic is but we don't mm -hmm. talk about we don't we don't talk about that part enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so um alita says i appreciate your masks that chin and nose flap is such an amazing concept especially for oh. us that wear glasses <laughs> that's amazing and lastly Hongera. <laughs> <laughs> rashid ahmed has said yes i've been saying i've never heard an overseas designer call a local designer by its media um I think that just goes back to what you're saying. Like, you know, no one says buy from Henry, Henry Holland just because, you know, he's British, but. Um, he's local. Yeah. yeah, he's a local, exactly. Um, yeah, and you know, I mean, there is this thing of designers um, making it overseas first, and then they've, they've established a name for themselves over there, and then they feed it into our market, you know, and as, as if though it were like, look, I've made it overseas, now, you know, shove it down your throat, it's, you're gonna love it. Mm. Um, I think that the rhetoric um, should change and it starts now and because we won't, you know, if, if we move down to lockdown five, again, as people are saying, we might, we're going mm. to have no other choice but to support ourselves locally. And I think then maybe, maybe this is a great step towards us taking away that idea of, you know, really should support local because it's local. No, mm. you should support local because maybe now you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, the, or you just love it. <laughs> Exactly. And I do. I, I support it. local where possible. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, we're doing amazing things. We just, we don't, we just don't talk about it enough. Mm. Um, I'm and guilty I, of it too. I'm nodding here and be like, yeah, Nisa. <laughs> 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 and we've more. got insane talent in this, just this country alone, not necessarily the, I mean, the continent's got insane talent, but just this country alone, we've got creatives that are doing insane things and we just must talk about it a whole lot more. Yeah. But anyway, I have used up a lot of your time and I really, really thank you for, for chatting with me, for sharing your story, your experiences. Um, thank you to every single participant that is here and for the ones that have fallen off I'll send them an email to say thank you as well. I appreciate your time and um, I'm, you. I'm glad that you are doing amazing things and um, yeah. Thank you. Thank I, you I, so <laughs> much. This was so much fun. Um, yeah and thank you for making me wear lipstick today. <laughs> um, <laughs> my tailors are looking at me and they're like where are you going? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> I felt I, I feel good today. Thank you. Uh, that is amazing. I will keep. I will. So everyone will find the recording uh, at whatever channel you found the actual registration link on. Please share it with your networks. I think this was an incredibly interesting chat and. 
Um, yeah, so we'll be chatting with, I'll, I will let everyone know who we're chatting to next week, but each week, each Friday is going to be a different creative. Um, and we, we, you know, our lens is always local sustainability, supporting our African talent. And um, yeah, just keep an eye out on the social channels again. Okay, cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.